Welcome to livingpianos.com. I'm Robert Estrin, and today the subject, as you might have guessed from the intro, is what are the best trill fingers? Ah, trills are, you know, sometimes people see trills and they think, oh my gosh, I just gotta play as many notes as possible. I've talked before about how trills must be measured. You have to know exactly how many notes you're playing in a trill. Even though when you listen to a trill, it sounds like a free form explosion of notes going back and forth. Trills have to be measured so you know exactly how many notes you play. Otherwise, ending a trill is impossible because you're leaving it the chance whether you end up on the right note or not. <laughs> so what are the best trill fingers? Well, sadly, you don't always have a choice. And there are some instances, for example, in Bach fugues where the fingers down here are doing something and you must trill with four and five, which is like the worst fingers to ever trill with. If you can avoid it, you try to avoid four, or five, uh, four and five as trill fingers because they're really difficult to trill. Now, a lot of people think, oh, of course, three and two are the best trill fingers. And indeed, three and two are pretty strong trill fingers, but for those of you who are trying to guess what are the strongest trill fingers, the answer I'm gonna give it to you right now Three and one. Three and one are the strongest fingers. Why? Because your thumb is the strongest finger and the third finger is probably the second strongest finger. So three and one are terrific. Four and two can work nicely, by the way. There are a lot of different possibilities. Three and one are great when you, ha and you have that possibility. Three and two are good too. It depends where you're coming from and where you're going in your score to determine what the right fingering is. Not only that, but if you have other lines within the same hand, sometimes, as I said, like in contrapuntal writing of Bach and fugues, you might not have much of a choice as to which fingers to use for trills. Now, I'm gonna give you one final trill fingering tip. And if you've never tried this, I'm gonna give you something that's really interesting. And it ties right in with the idea of measuring your trills. And if you measure your trills, you might wanna try this, which is three, one, three, two. By using those fingers, you actually reduce the load of the trill to three fingers, so none of the fingers have to work quite as hard because you're giving it a break. Not only that, but it helps you to measure trills. So even if you don't end up using 3132 as trill fingerings, it will help you to make sure that you're playing the right number of notes in your trills, which is the most important thing. You never wanna think of trills as, as something abstract from music. Just imagine that every single note is written out and just play it as it's written in the score. If you're figuring out your own trills, find something you can play reliably. Don't worry about trying to play the fastest trill. What's important is that it's musical, it's repeatable and dependable. And if you can use three and one or at least three and two, you're gonna be way ahead of the game. And I'd like all of you to try the three, one, three, two, and let me know how it works for you. Again, I'm Robert Estrin. This is livingpianos.com, your online piano resource. Lots of videos to come. Exciting news coming for you in this new year. I wanna thank all my subscribers and pass, on, pass it on, ring the bell, thumbs up, all the good stuff to share it with the rest of the world. If you love piano as much as I do, you, you'll wanna do that. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.